Hello there, and welcome to Hyundai Power Equipment. My name's Adrian, and today we're going to examine the HYM46 SPE lawnmower. Right, no time like the present. Let's go through the contents of your box then, shall we? Okay, first of all, we've got the lawnmower itself. Now you see that the handle is folded down on top of the lawnmower, and I'll show you how to assemble that in a moment. Next, we have the 70 litre grass collector bag. Then, we have the battery pack. I mean, one of the great features of this mower is that it's electric start, hence the battery pack. Then we have the mulching plug. I'll explain that to you a little later. The side discharge chute. I'll explain that one as well. The gasoline engine owner's manual. And then the lawnmower manual itself, which also contains the spark plug spanner and the spark plug spanner handle. Okay, and finally, you have your mains battery charger, which you may need to use when you first receive your product, or if you've left it over the winter and won't have you to charge your battery up. And that's the contents of your box. Okay, let's go through some assembly then, shall we? Okay, first of all, handle assembly. First of all, if you take your handle, bring it over to this side of the lawnmower, and you'll see it opens in the middle, so you can open it out. Secondly, these are the fastenings for fixing it to the mower, so you can remove all these fastenings. Oops, slip the little bevels. That's that side, and exactly the same on the other side. Okay, now then. You'll see the hole in the lawnmower itself. You can push the bolt through from the inside. Now this is a good point to take off the cable holders, which you'll see on the top of the plastic sleeving here. Remove those. At this point, you can remove the packaging, just the handle protectors and what have you. Get those out of the way. Because what we're actually trying to do here is to fit this handle over the top of this bolt. So, here we go. And that's that bolt into place. Now, at this stage, taking care not to trap any of the cables, we can do the same on this side. Where did I put the bolt? There it is. A little bit of a wriggle and jiggle. Lift the handle up and fold it right back over there. Now then, at this point, you'll see you've got the hand wheel and the little plastic spacer that what goes on the outside. Now it's got a curved face and that goes on to match up with the curve of the pipe. So if I just put that into place there. Basically do exactly the same thing on this side, make sure the bolt's right in, plastic spacer on, again with a curved face facing the pipe, or the handle, and do up the hand wheel. Now both of these can be tightened at this stage, That's it. taking care not to trap any of the control cables. So, next step from that one, I'll just roll it into shot a bit more for you. Open up. And you'll see they've got these little quick release clamps here, which will hold the handle in position. You simply, by pushing them over, that's the handle locked in position. Now you've got the two plastic clips which I removed earlier. They simply click onto there, and you'll see they've got two grooves in them on both of them. And that one can click into there. And it just keeps those cables nicely in position. And that's the handle part assembled. Next we'll move on to the battery pack. So this is probably the best time to remove the rest of the packaging from the handle. So we'll do that now. In your box, you'll find you've got four bolts. This sort of size. There's two long ones, two short ones. And also, you'll have four wing nuts. These are what we use to fit the battery box at this point here. To assemble the battery box, you'll notice that it's got four holes, one in each corner. The long screws go in the bottom, and short ones in the top. So we'll just put the bottom ones in for now, located on the handle. You'll see that there are four holes in the handle, 
basically just located on the handle so that the holes, the screws drop into the hole. There we are. Now at this point we need to make sure that the cables aren't trapped in any way. There we are, that's sat there nicely. And it's on the screws. So, short screws in the front. And we can fit the wing nuts. Now you'll see the screws stick out of the back. And you can fit the four wing nuts on the screws at the back. Just takes a moment. That's the two bottom ones. quite important that your nuts are very tight on the back of here because over time with vibration they can come undone so just take the time to tighten up the wing nuts very firmly okay and that's that job done next job is to connect the battery to the lawnmower now you'll see it's got this hanging cable here with a plug on the end and the socket is down here on this side of the lawnmower, so it's simply a case of plugging the battery box in. Nice and firmly pushed the male and female plug together. Then a little bit of the housekeeping at the end. Put the two cables back in the cable clip. And that's the battery connected. The next thing we're going to do is put some oil and fuel in the lawnmower. Now, very important thing to note here, the mower ships with no engine oil, so really important to fill with engine oil and obviously petrol before you get started. Right, we'll turn that around for you now and bring it into shot. Here we are. Here we have the oil filler and it's got a dipstick on the top here. You completely unscrew it and you'll see that it's got a dipstick. You'll notice on the dipstick that it's got a serrated area on the bottom. To the top of the serrated area is the level of engine oil you need. So you basically, when you've got the right amount of oil, you can dip it in without screwing it in, and the oil level should come to the top of the serrated area. Okay, so let's put some engine oil in. Now the engine oil we recommend, I mean, I know power products recommend Morris lubricants, but uh, the engine oil we recommend is a 15W40 oil. Um, a 10.30 would do, but we recommend 15.30. It's important that you pour the engine oil in quite slowly, um, because it's quite a narrow neck on the filler, and if you pour it in too quickly, it'll spill out all over the top. And give it time to go down the tube before you try the dipstick. So let's have a look. That's absolutely perfect. It's right to the top of the serrated area on the bottom of the dipstick. So that's the engine oil filled. Now you'll see that there's a label on here. It says caution, oil has been drained for shipping. Pretty much means that after it was originally tested, the oil would have been removed. So again, it just reiterates the fact that you need to put engine oil in. So at this stage, we can remove that label. I'll remove the fuel filler cap we can remove this plastic covering as well. And the next job will be to put petrol in. I'll spin it around for you again. Okay, let's turn it round. Okay, so the next job is to put petrol in. Use the fuel filler cap. We'll remove that. And we get some petrol. Now, clean, fresh, unleaded petrol. That's all it takes, no additives, nothing like that. It's four-stroke machines so with no two-stroke oil or anything like that. Just fresh, unleaded petrol. Okay, having filled it with petrol, firmly replace the filler cap. No little 
hidden tip here. If you've spilt any fuel at all, um, obviously wipe up any spilt fuel and give it time to evaporate before you start the engine to avoid any risk of fire because you've got hot items, exhausts and what have you around and we don't want to go down that road. So that's that done. Right, the next thing I'm going to show you is a few of the little features on the lawnmower. We've pretty much done most of the assembly, so I'll go through a few of the features. A few final little bits of assembly. And you'll see the pull starter is on top of the engine here, and there's a little pigtail loop for the pull starter to go through. Now, at this point, because I've put fuel in it and oil in it, there is a possibility that the engine will start, and I don't want it to start at the moment. It won't start because the basically the operator present handle hasn't been pulled, but just to be on the safe side, I'll remove the spark plug cap so I know there's no way the engine's going to start. So basically, if you pull out the full starter, give yourself plenty of slack, maybe a little bit more, there we are, and insert the string into the little pigtail, and the handles sit right up there next to the operator. You probably won't then need to use the pull start, but it's there if you've got a flat battery or what have you. It's always there, and you can pull start it manually rather than use the electric start. Next little bit of assembly, just a small detail this one, is the assembly of the grass box. Now you see when it comes in there, when it gets delivered to you it's quite sort of flat packed, but you'll see that there are three U-shaped channels on the end of the lower part of the bag, and they basically just clip over the bar, like so. litre grass collection bag assembled. Let's go through the four modes of operation for this lawnmower. As you know, having bought it, it's a four-in-one lawnmower. So what I'll do is explain the four different modes and how, how they work. First of all, I'll turn it round to give you a better view. Right. The mode as it comes, it's got no collection basket on, the side flap, as you can see, is closed, and there's no... Uh, mulch plugs or anything like that. This is what we call a cut and drop mode. So basically the lawnmower cuts the grass and it drops it out of the rear. A second mode would be cut and collect. You'll see on the 70 litre co uh, collection basket that there are two hooks, one either side. If you lift up the rear flap, these hooks simply hook on the two silver coloured bars at the top. Now, collection bags in place, this is cut and collect. Now the third mode, remove the collection basket, is cut and mulch. And this unit here is what we call the mulching plug. So if you hold it with the handle upright, you'll see a square hole in the back. Basically, that's a mulching plug fitted. Mulching is basically, there's no way for the grass to come out once it's been cut. So what happens is, instead of it cutting the grass and feeding it out or whatever in either direction it'll just keep cutting that grass up until it becomes really fine or mulched and then it'll drop onto the grass to be reabsorbed you know as it breaks down so that's cut and mulch right the fourth way is cut and side discharge now to set it up for cut and side discharge you lift the flap on the side fit the side discharge shoot leave the flap down on it and it holds it in place you'll see that there are two rectangular holes and two rectangular tags sticking up, simply fits like that. To do this you leave the mulching plug in place. Um, what are the features of this? If your grass is very long, um, say first cut of the season, it really is quite long, um, the mower will discharge grass out of the side of the mower a lot easier than out through the back and you'll be able to actually take a bigger cut on grass that is extremely long because it takes less power for the engine to blow the cut grass out through the side discharge flap so that's pretty much one purpose of it and again if you're cutting in side discharge the grass will drop alongside you instead of in the path of where you're walking and getting all over your feet so that's cut and side discharge and that's the four modes of operation while we're here let's go through a couple of the features of this lawnmower now this mower has a seven position height adjuster now the good thing with this mower is that it's a single point adjuster. So one bar, which moves back and forth, I shall show you that now, adjusts all four wheels simultaneously. And the mower will rise up or drop down according to where you have the lever. Let me just show you that. So that's in its lowest position. 
and as you can see, every time I move it to the back, it becomes higher, right up to its highest point, which would be there, and lower. So that's all four wheels, wheels in the low position, and that's high, and somewhere in the middle and so forth, with seven adjustable positions for your height between the deepest and the shallowest. So let's turn our attention to the controls of the lawnmower or how to operate it. We'll bring it into view for you. And you'll see first of all, up here by the soft grip handle, it's quite a nice handle that is really comfortable to operate and what have you. Um, it's a really sort of spongy soft grip handle. You've got two other handles, a forward one, a forward one and a backward one. The forward handle is what we call the operator present handle. Now for the engine to run, this has to be pulled back. Basically, it enables the spark to be alive. If you let go of that, it kills the spark and the lawnmower stops. It's an important safety feature. Um, if you were to have two hands free and the engine's still running, and say, for instance, you were emptying the grass box, the temptation's always there to pull the last little bit out and you could end up losing a finger or something even more serious. So, it, you know, it's an important safety feature. So to start the lawnmower, you would always have that handle pulled back. And whenever you release it, the lawnmower will stop. Right, you'll see there's a flap on the battery box here, and inside the battery box, you'll see a pair of keys. Close the box again. So, a key for the um, lawnmower and a spare. Right on the top here, basically, is the key slot. To start the lawnmower, you would pull back the operator present handle, turn the key, make sure that this throttle is completely down which is literally the choke position, turn the key and the lawnmower will start. Once the lawnmower has started, just ease the throttle back a little bit just to um, turn the choke off basically. So right down is the choke on and start position, just a little bit back, normal fast running position, and you can actually alter the speed of the engine and the lawnmower by dropping the throttle back or increase the speed by pushing it forward. Okay, so the battery, we do recommend when you first receive your lawnmower to charge the battery for six hours. Now it does come with a battery charger, plugs into your normal 230 40 volt mains outlet and just like a mobile phone charger it plugs into the bottom of the battery there um, so you could charge it for about six hours. Okay so let's battery charge it. So that's the start, pull the handle back, choke position, turn the keys, lawnmower starts having charged your battery. Now when you want to actually go forward in the self-propelled mode you need to pull the back handle. So it's in either on or off it doesn't adjust the speed so basically pull the back handle and off she goes. If it's going along a bit faster than your walking pace and you don't want to quite go so fast you can just ease the throttle back a little bit and it'll slow down how fast it travels. If you slow it down too much, remember you're also slowing down the speed of the blades as well, so there is a sort of happy medium where you can have it. But it, it doesn't go at a, a race off lip where you've got to run after it, it just goes at a nice steady walking pace in the normal sort of throttle position, which is about there. So basically, back is stop, pull that, and off it goes. If at any time you let go of both handles, the engine will stop and the lawnmower will stop. Well, now you're set to mow. Um, if you do have any further questions, uh, please re read your user's manual. There's a lot of useful information, hints and tips in there. Um, any further questions, you can either visit our website or call our after sales team um, and they'll be happy to help you. So, I've been Adrian and happy mowing.